in the 50s, homemaking was done for the husband. If you really look at it, and people go, no way. You know, you were supposed to do all these things, love waxing the floor and taking care of the children and then, you know, quaffing your hair at five o'clock and putting on lipstick and being there for your husband. And like, nobody's doing that these days in that way, <laughs> right? Uh, so why, you know, so why do it? Or what does it mean to do it? So I want to talk about homemaking in a post-feminist, post-modern world, you know, because uh, that's who I am. Now, you know, some of you folks are maybe in, in a different space, but to come back to homemaking, bringing all of ourselves to that. This is, you know, this is, this is 2005 and things have changed. And so, how, so what do we bring to homemaking? What's important and how can we look at our home life? How can it be a platform that supports every member of the family? And that's really the possibility. So that's the exciting part of this, is that we can really look at it in that way. Um, what I feel about homemaking is everybody needs a wife. I mean, wouldn't it be great if y'all had a wife, you know? And, yeah. and by that I mean somebody who was fulfilled by keeping the house and making it beautiful and taking care of the children and wasn't conflicted and wasn't going in 10 directions at once and you know, wasn't uh, underpaid labor and I mean, all of those things, right? So that's the, that's the image of the wife, the housewife. How many of you ever put housewife on any kind of form? I bet nobody ever put housewife, right? Homemaker, maybe. I suggest domestic goddess. Next time you have to figure out, <laughs> next time you fill out one of those forms, you know, if you're home with kids, domestic goddess. I'll tell you the problem with domestic goddesses, though, and this was so disappointing to me, because I really felt like mothering and homemaking is a feminist issue. All right, and it, but nobody quite got that yet. I mean, it's coming, you know, the last three or four years, it's slowly coming, but feminism in this country really sidestepped the whole thing of the family and in some ways undermined it, which was not the case in many other countries. The women's issues in many other countries helped women in strengthening the family. When feminism came in here, it was to get equal pay, to get equal opportunity in the corporate world, to break the glass ceiling, to have equal opportunity in education, when I graduated from college, like I think three or four percent of medical students were women. Now it's the majority, it's over 50 percent are women. So this is a huge change that's gone on. However, what happened to the family? What happened to, you know, a lot of your parents were having it all, were doing it all, were having a career and raising you, and some of you go, man, I'm gonna do something different. I'm at least gonna do it sequentially because <laughs> these, these women were killing themselves in that way. And yet we're complex, you know, mostly college educated, or you've worked for years, you're having children a lot later, <laughs> starting families in your 30s, you know, it's, it's a different thing. There's much more individuality. You bring much more of yourself. I certainly brought much more of myself to to raising a family than say my mother's generation did where that was what they did and also volunteered perhaps and you know found fulfillment in those ways. So this is the situation of the domestic goddess I think and oh you know in 73 I went to the first um, feminist women's bookstore in, in the Bay Area it was in Oakland and I asked them for the books on pregnancy and birth, you know, and I got laughed out of the bookstore because this was not their agenda. But for me, it was clear that midwifery and reclaiming our bodies and really looking at mothering was a feminist issue par excellence. So it's taken us a long time to really, you know, kind of interpenetrate with that. And, the, you know, the good news is the National Organization of Women in California actually finally, a few years ago, three or four years ago, issued a statement supporting women's ability to choose place of birth, supporting midwifery, and actually looking at birth rather than just some of the other issues that have been involved. So it's taken a while, and I'm like, it's a feminist issue. There should be better maternity leave. There should be support for childcare. There should be you know, uh, recognition that we contribute to the gross national product when we're at home with kids, that, child, that raising children is important. It's gonna happen. And then I started studying mythology at about the domestic goddess, and her name is Hestia or Vesta, right? The Vestal Virgins were, were uh, Vesta. The, the hearth in Greek mythology was, was Hestia, Hestia for the hearth. Every home in Greece had a, a, uh, an altar for the goddess of the hearth, but she was invisible. I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh dear, <laughs> what is this saying, right? So the domestic goddess, i.e. nurturing, is invisible. And is that not God's truth, right? I mean, you work all day and it's invisible, you know? 
your partner comes home and, you know, lucky if things haven't entropied, you know, if things haven't degenerated, <laughs> if it's as good as it was at seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> or it's invisible. What'd you do all day, dear? <sighs> <laughs> There's no answer to that, is there? I mean, especially with young children. Just keeping up with it, yeah, nurturing. And it, but it's like watching the grass grow. It's so slow with your children. You can't see the change. You can't see what you've given to them. You can't see anything happening, and yet you've given and give, you're exhausted. You know, here, you take the kid, right? I'm, I'm out of here, I've had it. So what is going on with that of, of this invisibility of nurturing? 